Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I've got a nice beginner stretching routine for you that you can follow along with. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance. And it doesn't get much better than that. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive in on this one. Alright guys, so today I've got a nice beginner stretching routine that you guys can follow along right with me. But just to kind of preface this, I want you guys to understand the difference between just basic stretching and mobility training because personally I am more of a mobility guy. The stretching stuff is a great way to enter the door, but eventually we need to progress that and grow that into a mobility training program. The difference between basic stretches and mobility is a couple things. So first of all, when we do basic stretching, we're not able to address joints directly. And that limits a little bit of our progress that we'll see. Second of all, when we do just basic stretching, we're really focused on the muscle itself and we're not able to really address any sliding surface dysfunctions that are occurring between the joints. So we can look at the length of a muscle in a certain position and that's about all we're getting out of that. And then finally, there's no dynamic part to the stretching component of you know what most people are doing when they think of stretching and just getting started. So you might see a little bit more dynamic movement in what we're gonna do today, but those are the main differences between mobility and just a stretching program that's focused on flexibility. Flexibility is actually just a component of our overall mobility. And if you guys wanna take advantage of seven days of free mobility training that's already programmed out for you, Drop by the link in the description below, it's right at the top there for you, and sign up for, for the seven day mobility training challenge. That is seven days, it's pre-programmed out for you, no equipment necessary for this one, it's just getting you started and in the door, and it'll help you identify any restrictions and limitations that you currently have that you might not realize are even considered restrictions and limitations. You're just kind of naturally moving around with them, but they are setting you up essentially for injury, aches or pains down the road, or they might already be contributing to that. Or at the very least, they're inhibiting your performance if you do already work out and you are just trying to get a little bit more flexible and trying to improve that side of things. So take advantage of that. But without further ado, let's get into the stretching. All right, guys, I do have a clock running. Don't worry, I will tell you when to switch. We're gonna spend about a minute in each position here that we're working on. So we're just gonna start first of all in an all force position with the knees directly below the hips and the wrist and hand directly below the shoulders. I want your elbows to stay straightened out throughout this movement here. And I just want you to start to circle and shift side to side as far as you can in both directions, testing that out and just letting the shoulders move on the upper back as well as in the joint itself, that glenohumeral joint. So we're just kind of getting things moving here from the shoulders to begin with. Play with what feels good, try different positions. We're opening up the wrists here and getting those shoulders started. Keep those elbows straight, keep them rotated in toward your ribs. No matter where you're going, try and keep those elbows in. Try not to let them flare on you. Very good, from this next position, we're gonna do a little cat-cow work here. So keep those arms locked out as we had them. You're gonna tuck your chin to your chest as far as possible, touching the Adam's apple first, and then imagining going all the way to the sternum. As we continue that spinal movement here, we're gonna actually push the floor away, making a big arch, and even tuck so that the glutes start to flex a little bit. You'll see that your abs start to engage as you get into a deeper position of the cat position. And then as the cow engages here, we're gonna feel that upper back musculature. So we're tucking the back of the head to the shoulder blades, engaging that mid back, and keeping those shoulder blades pulled down and back on the upper back there. So you should feel the scapula kind of sliding along that thoracic spine as we move here from cat to cow. All 
All right, next, step a leg, left leg here, outside of the left arm. Both hands are planted in line with that foot. If you have to work your way up there a little bit, if things are too tight to begin with, just start with that. And you don't have to add this movement, just kind of breathe in this position. One thing I do want you guys to be practicing throughout these stretches here and through this movement is nasal breathing. Just focus on breathing only through your nose. That's gonna help you relax the most. You're gonna take in more oxygen that way. For my back leg here, I want that hip internally rotated some. And you can see me kind of shifting and pivoting a little bit. You guys can play with that movement as well if it feels appropriate for you. If it's too much, you don't have to do it. But we're just kind of playing with the hips here. You might feel something at the hip crease on the inside. You might feel something up at the hamstrings depending on where you're tight. It might be the back leg at the hip flexors that you're feeling. What I want you to try and do with that back leg is keep those glutes engaged. Next, we're gonna switch sides here, so just go ahead and transition to the other side. Once again, hands in line with the foot, shoulders rolled down and back, elbows rotated in toward the body here, and we're just doing a little shift side to side. You might feel differences from side to side as well. It's okay, just make note of those, see what you feel, and uh, just be aware of it, that it's there. All right, next we're gonna step both legs back, come on down to your belly here, and start with the forearms first. Elbows in at the ribs. We're gonna pull those shoulder blades together on the upper back here, and just take a second with the chest elevated. And then when you're ready, go ahead and do a full extension here. But what I wanna make sure is happening is that you feel your glutes engaging, your quads engaging, and that's gonna stabilize our pelvis down low there. So without the glutes engaging, we might feel more low back pressure here. But if the glutes are engaging, we're gonna get that global arch, which is gonna keep us stable in this position. With the arms fully extended, the shoulder blades on the upper back, nice and firm, elbows in toward the ribs, start to play with your head a little bit and neck, feel a little stretch through there, and just keep this positioning nice and strong as you hold it. come back to that all fours we're gonna take that right arm and thread it through between the left arm and the left knee here I'm placing that shoulder down on the mat and then I'm trying to listen through the floor here so I'm trying to place my ear to the floor as much as possible here I'm gonna get a nice little stretch through the neck on the side there you might feel that thoracic rotation kind of challenging you in this position just let yourself settle into it as much as possible and if you feel more range of motion open up where you can separate separate the distance between that shoulder and the neck and head there, then go ahead and get that neck as flat to the floor as you possibly can. Just gradually work, work there. You'll see my head move a little bit each time and that's me adjusting the position as I open up more. Go ahead and switch sides, reaching through that left arm, across through the right arm and the right knee, that space right between. And here you get a little back view of what's going on. Once again, trying to get my ear to the floor with little space, as little space as possible between the floor and my neck there. Just imagining it lengthening out each time as I try and open up. Once again, that nasal breathing will help you relax into these positions. So if you feel yourself trying to tense back up, once again, come back to the nasal breathing.
Okay, very good. Take your arm now to that position. We're going to make a fist with the right arm and push the thumb down into the floor while the arm is fully extended. Then I'm going to rotate away from that arm. So my arm is completely straight out from the shoulder there back behind me with the thumb pressing into the floor itself. I'm using my left arm here to help prop. From the lower body, I want my left leg to be pushing foot down into the floor so I can feel my glute engaging there a little bit. And that bottom leg just kind of opening up into the floor, almost into a butterfly position. So the glutes are engaged from that. Very good, switching sides. So now take that left arm, once again, making a fist, driving that thumb down into the floor here. I've got my right hand assisting me to rotate away from the floor with my chest. I've got my glutes engaged with my right leg pressing down into the floor, foot down into the ground, and then my left leg also pressing into the floor from the outside of the leg. All right, next, slowly make your way out of that one. We're gonna come to a point where we're stretching the ankles here. So now we're gonna stretch for plantar flexion along the front of that shin. Our goal is to sit butt to heels if possible. This is called sitting seiza. And if you're not able to sit butt to heels to start here and that's too much pressure on your knees or your ankles to begin with, place a little bit of a pillow in between your hamstrings and your calves, and that'll take some of the pressure off. While we're sitting here, I want you guys to play with your head and neck a little bit. So we're going to do full circles from side to side. Use your eyes to kind of guide that range of motion as you go through it. And just keep yourself as full of a range of motion in that spinal rotation as possible. Very good. Now we're going to change the position slightly just by tucking our toes underneath us. One big thing that happens is we lose that toe extension. And when we lose our toe extension, it changes our gait and our mechanics. So we want to restore that as much as possible. We're tucking the toes underneath here. Once again, you can keep that pillow between the hamstrings and calves if this pressure is still too much on the knees in this position. You'll also see me rolling those shoulder blades. We're gonna go a few to the front, as far as we can take it, and then a few in the reverse direction, coming back around. And here we're just looking for scapular rotation here in every direction. So we got some protraction, we got some elevation, we got some depression, we got some retraction. And just hit it from both angles there. Take your time. Good. From there, we're going to transition to a sprinter stretch. And what I'm going to do is interlace my left hand, those fingers, in between my right toes on my foot there. And we're just going to work a little bit of toe splay here. So you can't quite see it behind my leg. It's a little bit hidden. But I have my left fingers interlaced with my right toes. And I just want you to sit nice and tall in this position and try and get those fingers as deep as you can in between those toes. If you need to, you can actually flex the foot and squeeze your fingers for about five seconds and then release. And that should open up a little more range of motion for you to slide those fingers in a little bit deeper each time. If you're not able to get fully in between those toes just yet, don't worry. It's something you can work on. Just know this is an area that we really need as far as restoring our foot mobility overall. A lot of us have lost this. All right, 
and switching sides here you can see it a lot better getting those fingers in between those toes and then just sitting nice and tall trying to keep my leg in alignment so that it's not just falling open from that leg that's out front there and sitting as tall as I'm able to in that posture making sure I'm not hunched over my legs in this position so you'll find your sits bones those little bony processes that are under your butt there that you can sit up so your butt's not tucked underneath you in this position final position here I want you to place three points of contact of each foot together so our first metatarsals are touching our fifth metatarsals are touching and our heels and we're going into a little bit of a butterfly stretch here I'm pulling myself using my shoulders to pull my upper back nice and strong here sitting as tall as I'm able to once again not trying to round over the position but get my sits bone and align that spinal column nicely in here my knees, I'm trying to let fall open as much as possible. And if you have trouble with this because your adductors are tight, those inner thighs, what you can do is actively flex those glutes for a few seconds and then release. And that should help open that up. So feel your butt engage for a few seconds and then release. Feel your butt engage for a few seconds and then release. And that will start to give you some more range of motion in this position as well. All right, and there you guys have it. A nice, quick stretching routine that you guys can follow along with and really just get yourself started in the right direction with trying to improve the overall way that you feel and that your body moves in general. If you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend. You know, maybe they don't quite know the difference between mobility and flexibility and all that stuff. This is the channel to be on, guys. So make sure that you are following along and you've shared this with a friend so that you can spread the love on this one. If you have any questions about anything that we did today, be sure to drop those down below in a comment or just let me know how you're feeling after this one uh, with a quick comment down below. And last but not least, if you have not already, take a moment to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve those aches and pains, prevent the injuries, and overall optimize your performance. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. I'll see you guys next week.